Captain's Log, Stardate 4515.5. We are in orbit around the planet Oceanica, near its tiny moon, Corallus. The orbit of this moon is decaying, and we are here to witness the moment when it spirals into its mother planet. There is no life on the planet, and the moon is devoid of all but the simplest single-cell plant life. Our orders are to observe and let nature take its course. Congratulations, Commander. Before that, I have the distinct honor of conferring the rank of Lieutenant Commander to three well-deserved officers. Congratulations, Commander. Congratulations, Commander. Thank you. Captain, the probes have all been deployed and we're scanning on all frequencies. We calculate Corallus will enter the planet's atmosphere six hours and 32 minutes from now. Beautiful, isn't it? It really does look like there's coral down there. Coral? Yes. Captain Mori of the Exeter did the first field survey 14 years ago. He named the moon Corallus because it reminded him of the Earth's oceans. He kept the theme going and he named the planet Oceanica. So there's no ocean on Oceanica and no coral on Corallis? Ironic, isn't it? Commander Allen, I'll leave the research in your capable hands. If you need me, I'll be in the briefing room with a backlog of reports. And one of the things that you will notice, Captain, is that we are very soon being issued brand new uniforms. Rousseau here. I'll be right there. Just include that in your TPX report for this week. I know what the captain's going to say when he hears this. I don't think we have the horsepower to do it anymore. They could be trying to so communicate now. Two, just don't know. Six, five, three, five. Yeah, that's what I thought. Can we boost that some sort of rate? We need more data. I'm glad it's not my decision. So, what'd you find? We were scanning Corralla, sir. We came across an unusual message coming up from the surface. Message? Hi, sir. It's Pi. Yes, sir. Pi. Broadcast repeatedly. It's quite brilliant, actually. Pi is recognized by every advanced civilization. So, now that we received a message, what are we going to do about it? It could be anything, Captain. It could even be a trap. The sector is calling with pirates, or worse. Sir, we did not find any technology on the surface, but I do believe there's life down there. I think we should try to make contact with who or whatever it is. I concur, sir. Duly noted. Denson. Do we have time for a quick look around? Yes, sir. We've got a few hours. Doctor, Alan, meet me in the transporter room in 10 minutes. Wear gravity boots and a breathing apparatus. The air is breathable, but it's a bit thin down there.
Wayne, are you sure you're ready for this? This what? This away mission? They can be really dangerous. Well, try to understand, Astrid. I want to contribute. I want to make a difference. And nobody's ever done that by playing it safe. I understand that. And maybe that's why I love you, but promise me you're going to be careful. Hey, we have a bridge game next Wednesday, and you're going to make a much better partner alive. Yes, of course. I will be as careful as I can possibly be, given the circumstances. Now, toss me a uniform shirt, will ya? I love you. I love you too. Stop worrying. I'll be fine. I got it. Bridge, Tuesday. Wednesday. Wednesday. I'll be fine. <sighs> Secure your masks. Watch your footing down there. It can get pretty treacherous. The tidal forces go both ways, so there could be moonquakes. This just keeps getting better and better. Chief, activate gravity boots. Energize. It's like walking on a layer of rubber. Five. Watch your step. Eight. The surface can get treacherous. Nine. I have a bad feeling about this. Seven. Looks like the single strongest source is in that direction. Still, the only thing it has to say is pie. Jason, are you seriously suggesting that we abandon it because its social skills aren't up to our standards? Settle down, doctor. Nobody's wow. suggesting anything yet. <laughs> Kim! He's having Please. a panic attack. Lieutenant, <laughs> leave your mask alone. That's an order. <sighs> Wait, guys. The air's fine. It's a little thin. Zero. What happened to Lieutenant Brock? Did you have anything to do with that? Where is he? That was unfortunate. Unfortunate? You slimy. Wait, you could talk? Yes, Captain Brusa. We, who are many, can communicate with you now. 
Orea. We have heard radio waves from other planets, and communications from the vessels pass us by. We learn, bit by bit, but we learn empty knowledge. We, who are one, learn words and we learn math, but have no context of which to use them. He made more sense when he was reciting by. This thing appears to be a super organism. It's a colony of something like polyps, similar to coral on Earth. It's one entity, but made up of many. Actually, I believe this one organism covers nearly the entire surface of this moon. Lieutenant Brock never did you any harm. Why did you kill him? Your friend is not dead, Commander. He is here. He is with us. He is us. It is because of his memory, his context, that we can communicate with you. We are many. We are one. Apparently, it grows by assimilating any nearby life forms. Each new individual contributes to the whole. It's a good thing we have these oxygen masks on, sir. The atmosphere is perfectly safe, but it's saturated with spores which clearly are not. Once in the lungs, they are instantly distributed throughout the bloodstream where it breaks down the body for absorption by the creature. But somehow the mind, all the knowledge, thoughts, the emotions, experiences, it all remains intact. It's incredible. We will attempt to help you, but I'm not sure we could save the moon. Or you. We, who are many, thank you. Captain. Yes. You should leave quickly. I couldn't agree more. Dimension, three to beam up. I've lost Lieutenant Brock's signal. Does that mean that he's dead? That's debatable, Chief. But he won't be making the return trip with us. Alan, how long until Corrales enters the planet's atmosphere? Roughly three and a half hours, sir. Everybody back to their posts. Perso to Quincy. Quincy here, sir. I need you to target that moon with the tractor beam. Boost the power any way you can. Try and raise it back into orbit. If you can't do that, at least slow the orbital decay and buy us some time. Aye, sir. We'll give it our best try. Captain. Lieutenant Brock? Captain, please explain to Brock's wife what has happened. Just hold tight, Lieutenant. We got a lot of work to do and not much time to do. Engineer, what's the status of that tractor beam? The tractor beam is engaged, sir. We've diverted power from several non-essential systems. We've slowed the orbit with the K, but I don't think we have the power to stabilize it. XO, how long until that moon hits the atmosphere? About an hour or so, sir, more or less. If we divert power from every system except for life support and gravity, we could gain an extra 15 minutes. That would give us 75 minutes. Do it! Captain, may I have a moment? Of course, after you. Deck nine. Lieutenant. 
I am sorry. But this is what we signed up for. We all know the risks. Lieutenant, you only get one of those. Four months. We'd only been married four months. Astrid, I really am sorry. He was a good man. He will be missed. May I remain on the bridge and watch that miserable rock crash into the planet? Lieutenant, we're going to do our very best to stop that from happening. You really need to stop doing that. You are really going to try to save that, that thing that killed my husband. Lieutenant, I don't have the time to discuss this with you. You need to go to your quarters, get some rest, until I decide what to do with you. After all, you struck a superior officer. There must be consequences. Astrid. Wayne? Yes? Where are you? I found that I can manipulate things with my mind. I, causing your walls to resonate, generating sound. You'll never be able to come back, will you? No, Astrid. My physical shell is gone. But all that made up the person that you loved is still here. I miss you so much. I miss you too, Astrid. They'll save you. They always find a way. Engineer, can we get any more power on the tractor beam? Not unless we can all hold our breath for a very long time, or you don't mind floating home with no artificial gravity. Wait a second, weren't you working on some kind of anti-gravity gizmo a while back? It's untested, but I suppose it could work. Well? I've been toying with the idea of a new type of artificial gravity. We could focus a beam on a ship, and it would provide gravity throughout the entire ship. How can a ship aim a beam at itself? I'm still working on that part. But I think if we use the deflector dish to project the beam outward, then we can increase the gravity on any object we choose. And it's a simple matter of reducing polarity and creating a negative gravity. The beam focused on the planet could help to repel the moon to a higher orbit. Could it be ready in a couple hours? I think so, sir. Worth to try, anyway. Give it your best shot, engineer. I'm on it. Helm, steady as she goes. I just hope time is on our side. What now? Captain, I believe we have a visitor, and I have a hunch they don't like us very much. What gave you that idea? Tompkins, hail our new friends. Invite them to stop shooting at us. Unknown ship. This is the Federation Starship Dominion. Please acknowledge. Shields down 1%, sir. <laughs> Make that 1.2%, sir. Sir, the vessel is hailing us. This should be interesting. Put it on main screen. Greetings. I am Captain Jason Brousseau of the Starship Dominion. I know who you are, Broussard. That's Rousseau. <laughs> We've been watching you for quite some time. I am Captain Kataka of the warship Muktai's Hammer. We hail from the planet Vincentia 5.
Captain, may I ask why you are attacking us? You may not. But Captain, why do you stand your ground? Why does this pathetic little moon deserve your protection? Our scans show nothing of any particular value. The only value here is scientific. Of course it is. Or perhaps you've discovered some rare and valuable element. I think I should go down and see for myself. No, you really don't want to do that. It's really dangerous. Really? Our scans show a very breathable atmosphere and no significant life forms. No, I think I shall go down and see firsthand what it is you do not want me to see. Prepare the shuttle. This guy is insufferable. Sir, they've launched a the shuttle. It's heading for Corrales. All we can do is hope that he's more cautious than he is friendly. Sir, we're ready to test my anti-grav device. Finally, some good news. Can you run the test from the bridge? Hi, sir. But for this device to be effective, we're going to have to shut down the tractor beam and the shields. Sir, if the shields are not down for too long, I don't think they can do much damage. Engineer, how long do you think it would take to restore orbit with your new device? Well, it's untested, sir, so I can't say with any accuracy, but I'd estimate three, maybe four hours. Taft, drop shields. Engineer, engage your device. Hi, sir. Captain, I activated the anti-grav device, but it immediately deactivated. Sir, the helm is not responding. And our course has been changed. Present course? We are on a collision course with Oceanica, sir. Engineering, I need helm control, and I need it now. Sir, all systems are unresponsive. All temperatures rising, sir. Communications are offline, sir. Engineering, where's my helm control? It's Kataka. He's been absorbed and he's taken control. Kadak, I know you can hear me. Without our help, your moon will fall into the planet's atmosphere within hours. It will be destroyed, and so will you. <laughs> Sir, we have helm control. Quincy, get us back to standard orbit. Already on it, sir. Engineering. Full power is restored. Anti-grav device is back online. What the devil? It was the devil. And he's just joined us. The devil? That's pretty harsh, Lieutenant Ted. What have I ever done to you? What have... Your ship is still attacking us! Captain, please, just say the word. <sighs> it isn't my ship anymore. But, good point. There, I've disabled their weapon systems. I'm really getting the hang of controlling things. Brock taught me how. Well, <laughs> he had no choice, really. We are part of the same consciousness. I know everything he knows. Kataka, remind me exactly why we should save you. Come now, Captain. You know as well as I do that you will save this moon if you can. It's the Federation way. Help all sentient life forms and deal with the consequences later. <laughs> I find it refreshing. Stupid, but refreshing. Sir, there's a shuttlecraft en route from Corrales to the Vincentian ship. Kataka. I cannot allow you to send that shuttle to the planet. We cannot allow more of your people to join you. Your evil is balanced with Lieutenant Brock, and I intend to keep it that way. Helm, tractor that shuttle into our shuttle bay. Aye, sir. With pleasure.
even if we solve the immediate problem, Kataka is going to be a pain in the Federation's backside for as long as- I see your plan clearly now, Captain. You wish to turn this moon into my eternal prison. Well, I'd rather die than be engaged in an endless wrestling match with that buffoon Brock. So, I will, Captain. Wait, Kataka! Kataka! All nav systems are non-responsive. We're gonna dive again, sir. As long as good and evil are balanced down there, it's gonna be this way. I need to go down there and tip the scales. Lieutenant Brock and I can take control. But Captain... There's no time for debate. Don, you take the ship. for the last away mission. Uh, I, I, I don't know them. That's a nice try, Chief. But I know the coordinates are stored in memory. Do it now, or I'll incapacitate you and do it myself. Astrid, no, I'll go. Someone has to go down there and help stop Kataka, Captain. I volunteer. No, we'll find another way. We've only got seconds, Captain. You need to take a step back and stop wasting time. And for the record, Captain, I know you tried. Energize. Sir, the helm is back online. Returning to Sandit orbit, sir. Sir, the anti-grab beam has been reinitiated, but we have no control. And sir, the polarity has been reset to increase the gravity. Sir, the orbit of Corallus is deteriorating more rapidly than ever. At this rate, it'll enter the planet's atmosphere in a minute or so. Wayne, Astrid, Please reconsider. We can quarantine the planet. We can somehow make it so you can live in peace. We appreciate that, Captain, but our resolve is firm. We have the upper hand at the moment, but it's only a matter of time before someone else as bad as Kitaka comes along. Sir, if you restore our orbit, we could spend eons here, battling for control. The very thought of it makes us weary. Farewell, Captain. Godspeed, and good luck to you all. We are many. We are one. Quincy. Laying a course for the solar system. Warp factor three. Aye, sir. Let's go home. <laughs>